Slaughter's my name. Luke Slaughter. Cattle's my business. It's a tough business. It's big business. I've got a big stake in it. And there's no man west of the Rio Grande big enough to take it from me. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone, Civil War cavalryman turned Arizona cattleman. Across the territory from Yuma to Fort Defiance, from Flagstaff to the Machucas, and below the border through Chihuahua and Sonora, his name was respected or feared, depending on which side of the law you were on. Man of vision, man of legend, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. The time finally came when I decided there'd be more profit in raising my own cattle and driving other men's herds up to Tombstone from Mexico and Texas. And about the same time, I heard that Aaron Holcomb's spread was for sale. So one day, Wichita and I rode down toward the San Pedro Valley to look it over. Well, Wichita, what do you think? Well, if you wish to ask me... I am. You are. I'll be dang. <laughs> well, I think it's a pretty good proposition all around. You get a good, healthy herd of beef cattle and several hundred acres of grazing land... And Aaron Holcomb gets out like he wants to. I don't see how either one of you can lose. That's the way I look at it. Let's ride over to Aaron's and close the deal. Howdy, Aaron. Howdy, Luke. Wichita. Howdy, Aaron. Well, Aaron, I'm ready to talk business. Good. Come on into the house, and I'll see if I can get Sarah to rustle up some coffee. It's a mighty nice herd you got there, Aaron. How many head you figure you're running? Well, not counting calves, somewhere between 450 to 475. Let's count the calves and make it 500. That's mighty generous of you, Luke. Got company, Sarah. Well, Mr. Slaughter and Wichita, how are you? Hello, Mrs. Holcomb. Hi, Mom. Suppose you could find some hot coffee for these gents? I would be the least bit surprised. <laughs> Sit down, Luke. Over there, Wichita. Uh, thank you. Sarah, Mr. Slaughter is interested in buying. Well, I must say that's a relief. I said to Aaron, Mr. Slaughter, I said, if Mr. Slaughter won't take the place off your hands, who will? <laughs> Well, it isn't exactly a matter of taking it off your hands, Mrs. Holcomb. Aaron's built up a valuable spread here. Yes, but who in Tombstone's in a position to buy it but you? And I declare I'd go out of my mind if we had to wait around here for oh, goodness knows how long, selling it off piece by piece and cow by cow. Well, I don't think that'll be necessary. Aaron, I'm prepared to offer you $5,000 for your outfit. Lock, stock, and barrel. Five thousand? Well, no, that's a pretty fancy price, if you ask me. Nobody did, Wichita. Oh. Wichita's right, Luke. It is a fancy price, but <laughs> I'll accept it. Good. I've drawn up a bill of sale and a deed, Aaron. If you'll just sign here. All right, Luke. How about the money? You want me to deposit it to your account in the bank in town? No, Luke, I never did trust banks. They get robbed too often. I prefer cash. I thought you might. So I brought it with me. There you are. Five thousand in hundred dollar bills. Count it. I don't have to, Luke. I know it's all there. Well, that's an awful lot of cash to have laying around there. Oh, it won't be laying around, Wichita. I got my own private hiding place. Where? Well, I don't aim to disclose it to a swindling old coot like you. <laughs> but I will say it's under a board in this kitchen. But I ain't specifying which board. <laughs> <laughs> you, you always was a cautious one, Aaron. Reckon that's why you live so long. No, Wichita. Sarah is why I've lived so long. Oh, well, I reckon she is at that. Say, what are you two talking about? Hey, <laughs> you see, Aaron, you've been reformed so long that greenhorns like Luke here don't even know what a bad man you once was. What? You mean to tell me, Luke, you never heard of a gunslinger named Big Aaron? No, 
I guess that was before my time. Yeah, I guess it was. Why, Aaron here was once the fastest gun in the panhandle. How many men was it you helped along to their reward, Aaron? Some say 12, others 14. I never did rightly know. Wichita, you talk too much. Yeah, that's what Luke says. But be that as it may, truth is, Luke, Aaron probably could have outgunned you in his prime. Well, I don't know. That was a long time ago. Before Sarah came along and showed me the error of my ways. <laughs> well, don't get the idea I was exactly a gospel singer, Mr. Slaughter. You don't learn many hymns at the birdcage in Abilene. But I loved him. So I hung up my gun, and for nearly 20 years, I ain't used it on anything bigger than a rattlesnake or a coyote. You see, I preferred a live husband to a dead legend. And you live to regret it, hmm? Not a single day of it. <laughs> Mr. Slaughter, when will you want us to move off the place? There's no hurry, Mrs. Holcomb. You just take your time. Where are you two heading? On west? Oh, mercy, no. We're going back east to Missouri. Well, I never. Folks don't go back east. Not when they got themselves a going outfit like you have or had. Oh, but I've still got kinfolk back there. Well, kin ain't no reason to leave God's country. And I've got a hankering to see green fields again and to grow something else besides beef cattle. You gonna be a farmer, Aaron? <laughs> Looks like it. If that's what Sarah wants, then it's what I want. Aaron, ain't you carrying this devotion thing a little too far? All right, come on. Let's head back for Tombstone, Wichita. Yeah, you I know. I know. I talk too much. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Slaughter. Good evening, Nellie. What's on the fire tonight? Well, there's fried pork chops and fried steak. I'd recommend the pork chops. Well, say, what's the matter with my cattle? Oh, I didn't mean that, Mr. Slaughter. Hey, evening, Luke. Evening, Nellie. Evening, Wichita. Pork chops or steak, Wichita? Don't make no difference. I'm hungrier than a woodpecker with a headache. Uh, steak, I guess. No, I'll bring it along as soon as I get these other gentlemen's orders. Where you been? Oh, I just dropped by the epitaph office to pick up the evening paper. Well, 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 what you know? What? Here's your name in the paper, big as life. What's it say? We understand Luke Slaughter has decided to settle in these parts. Yesterday we heard he bought Aaron Holcomb's spread down on the San Pedro River. We also understand Luke paid a very pretty penny for it. I wonder how that got in the paper. Well, I don't know, Luke. I'll bet you don't. You know, between that nosy nose of yours and that wagon tongue, somebody's going to get into trouble someday, and I hope it'll only be you. Now, Luke, I was only... My business is my business and nobody else's, and I don't like reading about it in the newspaper. Is that clear? Why, sure, Luke, sure. Now, stop it, please. Oh, stop what? I was just trying to be friendly. If you just give me your order. Say, I got it. Piers Nellie's having a little trouble. Why yeah, those two, Wichita? You know them? Never laid eyes on them before. Strangers, most likely. Must be. Well, they'd know better. Come on, I don't be like What seems to be the difficulty, gentlemen? Huh? Oh, we ain't having any difficulty. We just being friendly with this little filly here. It's all right, Nellie. I'll take care of this. Thank you, Mr. Slaughter. I guess you boys aren't very well acquainted in Tombstone, or you'd know that this is the dining room of the San Jose house, not the bar room of the Occidental. Rough stuff doesn't go here. Who are you? The owner of the hotel? No. Uh, maybe a, a sky pilot, then. No. Then what right you got buttoned in? The right any man's got to help a lady when she needs it. Now, you boys better mind your manners or go get your supper someplace else. You know, mister, I just may have to cut you down to size. I wouldn't try it, son, if I was you. Why not, Pop? Guess you don't know who you're talking to. That's right. I don't know and I don't care. Well, you better care. This here is Luke Slaughter. And watch me. Luke more. Slaughter? Well, well, you're quite a famous man, Mr. Slaughter. <laughs> Say, this is the fellow we was reading about in tonight's paper, Thad. Yeah, well, buying up ranches is one thing and pushing people around is another. I'm not pushing anybody around. I'm just telling you to mind your manners. Come on, Wichita. Let's tie on the feed bag. <laughs> Guess I must have discouraged the two Randy Ranahans, because a couple of minutes later they left. 
presumably to find a dining room where it was permitted to pinch the waitresses. And I forgot all about them, since my business is primarily not the protection of Tombstone's women folk, but cattle. I was tending to my business the next afternoon, when Wichita busted into my office at the Cattlemen's Association. A terrible thing has happened, an awful thing. What, Wichita? It's Sarah Holcomb. What's the matter with her? Well, Heron just brought her into the doctor. She's cut up something terrible. Who cut her? Heron don't know, and she can't talk. She's unconscious. We'd better go over to the docks and see if there's anything we can do. When we got to the doctor's office on Toughnut Street We found Sarah lying on a big bed in the back room Aaron's huge body seemed shrunken as he knelt by the bed Holding her tiny hand in his The doctor waved us back into his office And closed the door behind him How is she, Doc? She's dying, Wichita What happened to her? Luke, I've been doctoring out here for a long time, and I've seen people die in a lot of different ways. I treated bullet wounds, dug out arrows, sewed up knife gashes. But I've never seen anything as rotten as what somebody did to that poor woman. What did they do to her? Spurs. Big, rowel chihuahuas. They must have kicked her for a long time. She's got holes all over her body. A dirty sidewinder. Is she conscious? She won't be for long. Can I talk to her? Well, I guess it don't make any difference now. Go on in. No, sir. Sir. How do you feel, Mrs. Holcomb? Oh, not too good, Mr. Slaughter. But I'll be all right in a few days. Doctor said so. Of course you will. Mrs. Holcomb, who did this to you? I don't know. I never saw them before. There were two of them. They rode up to the ranch just before noon. I was down in the wash looking after a new drop calf, Luke. I see. Go on, Mrs. Holcomb. They said to give them the money you paid us for the ranch. I told them I didn't know what they was talking about. Then one of them knocked me down, and the other began kicking with his spurt. Sure. Sure, no, no, sure. Can you tell me what they looked like, Mrs. Holcomb? Anything about them? Well, they, there was two of them. I, I think I heard one of them call the other Thad. Thad? Yeah. He was the little one. He's evil. He's cruel and mean and evil. It was him that did this to me. Oh. Sure. All right, sure. Mrs. Holcomb. You just lie back and rest now. She... she tell you anything, Luke? Warren, she knew she did, Wichita. One of them's named Thad. Does that mean anything to you? Uh, No, can't say that it does. Those two cowboys in the San Jose house last night. Didn't one of them answer to the name of Thad? The little one. Why, by Topher, I think he did. Wasn't he wearing Chihuahua spurs? With long rowels. Yeah, he was. Doctor, come quick. The huge figure of Aaron Holcomb filled the doorway behind which lay his dead wife. His broad features sagged with shock and grief, then tightened in determination. He pulled out his gun, a gun which had not been drawn against a man in nearly 20 years. Slowly he spun the chamber, making sure that it was fully loaded. What are you aiming to do, Aaron? What do you think I aim to do? This is a job for the law, Aaron. The sheriff will have those men by nightfall. They'll both be dead by nightfall. If you kill them, you'll hang. Let the law handle this and they'll hang. Maybe. Or maybe they'll go to Yuma for life. I can't take that chance. They'll get a fair trial. Did they give Sarah a fair trial? Bushwhacking a defenseless woman? They got no more guts than their father had. Their father? Yeah. You heard Sarah say one of them's named Thad. Yeah. I know who they are now. Thad Jenks, boys. Who's Thad Jenks? 
Last man I outdrew back in Abilene nearly 20 years ago. A yellow coward who went for his gun when my back was turned. But he never got it out of the holster. Yeah, that's right, Luke. I was there. Quiet, Wichita. You see, Luke, they weren't after the money. At least that isn't the reason they came up here to Tombstone. They came a feuding. Well, they got a feud now, all right, a blood feud. But, Aaron, you can't take the law into your own hands. I aim to. Then I gotta remind you, Aaron. I'm a deputy sheriff, and it's my duty to stop you. I wouldn't try it, Luke. Aaron, listen to me. What would Sarah think if you put the gun back on? Sarah can't think no more, Luke. No. If you gents don't mind, I'd like to be alone with her for a little while. Wichita. Yeah, Luke? Go over to the sheriff's office. Tell him he's going to have a shooting on his hands if he doesn't lock those two up before Aaron finds him. How you know they're still in town? I don't, but I'm sure going to find out if I have to search every saloon on Allen Street. Let's go. That's just about what I did. They weren't in Hereford's or Bob Hatch's. They weren't in the Oriental or the Occidental. Just about decided they'd been smart enough to skip town when I found them in the Alhambra. This one's empty. Sure, can't you see? We're, we're dying of thirst here. Never mind, bartender. They've had their last drink for a while. Well, if it isn't Mr. Luke Slaughter. What's the idea of the gun, Mr. Slaughter? It's Deputy Sheriff Slaughter. Signifying? I'm arresting you two for the murder of Sarah Holcomb. You must be mistaken, Slaughter. We don't know no one named Sarah Holcomb. Those spurs you're wearing look mighty sharp. Well, they are. My horse has an awful tough hide. It's too bad Sarah Holcomb didn't have a tough hide when you used him on her. Now move. Nobody's moving. Unless he wants to be stopped with a bullet. Aaron, listen to me. Put your gun away, Luke. It's too late to play lawman. Aaron, I can't let... Just step to one side out of the line of fire. These boys and me are going to talk business. If you try it, I gotta defend them, Aaron. It don't matter much to me, Luke. If I have to kill you to get him, well, then I'll have to. Hey, who is this crazy old fool? We never saw him before. That's right, Sonny. But I bet you heard about me all your life. I'm the fella who killed your pappy. But I killed him in a fair gunfight, just like I'm going to kill you. Not the sneaking, sneaky way you killed my wife. He's out of his mind, Slaughter. I tell you, we didn't kill his wife. He's convinced that you did, and so am I. I'm putting my pistol back in its holster, so everything will be fair and square. Now, you boys can take off your guns and try me, or you can go for them and try me. Don't make any difference. Either way, I'm going to kill you and... Either way, it'll be a quicker and easier death than you gave Sarah. Oh, look, uh, mister, you're making a mistake. Leave us out of here. We'll get out of town and never come back. You're never leaving this town. You're staying right here on Boot Hill. Now draw. Aaron, you go for your gun and I'll have to go for mine. You do that, Luke. But I won't be aiming at you. I couldn't draw on Aaron, and he knew it. There was nothing I could do to stop his vengeance. The silence of waiting death hovered over the room. The smell of fear was there, too. Aaron stood facing the two terrified brothers, his feet wide apart, his open hand hovering an inch away from his holstered gun. The seconds that seemed like hours, they stood there. And finally, Harv Jenks went for his gun. Aaron's arm was a blur as he pumped two shots into Harv before he could get his gun out. As he fell dying, he fired once, and across Aaron's chest, a red stain slowly spread. Thad Jenks stood in frozen terror, his gun still holstered. Then he found his voice. Mr. Slaughter, for the love of God, don't let him kill me! All right, Aaron, that's enough shooting. You're right, Luke. A bullet's too good for this one with those nice, sharp spurs. Of course, I ain't wearing spurs, sonny. And I got no knife to cut you up like you did, Sarah. But I got two hands. Big hands. 
Hands big enough to crack your bones. Big enough to choke the life out of you little by little. Arm swinging, his great hands outstretched like a huge gorilla. Aaron slowly moved across the room toward the terrified killer. Then Jenks backed away from him until he bumped into the bar. <laughs> he seemed to remember his gun. Yanking it out, he poured shot after shot at Aaron, but he never stopped advancing. The gun was empty. Thad threw it away and tried to make a break for the door, but Aaron took it, grabbing him by the throat with one hand and smashing him in the face with the other. That's enough, Aaron. Let him go. Let him go, Aaron. He's dead. Dead? You sure? Yes, Aaron. You've had your revenge. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Luke. I, I, I had to do it. I know. <laughs> I'll go get the doc, Aaron. No, no, Luke. There's nothing the doc can do for a man that stopped six slugs. <laughs> Luke? Yes, Aaron? Luke, this is the only time I ever broke a promise to Sarah. I know. But there's one last promise I don't want to break. If you'll help me. Sure, I will, Aaron. I... I promised Sarah we'd go back to Missouri together for the rest of our days. Luke, will you see to it that we do? Uh -huh. of Tombstone, starring Sam Buffington, was written by Thomas Houghton and adapted for radio and directed by William N. Robeson. Editorial supervision by Tom Hanley. Supporting Mr. Buffington were Irene Tedrow, D. Tatum, Sam Edwards, Chet Stratton, Dick Legrand, Junius Matthews, and Lou Merrill, with music composed by Wilbur Hatch and conducted by Amerigo Marino. Next week at this time, we return with... Slaughter's the name... Luke Slaughter. When we meet up again, you can call me that Luke Slaughter. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs> Thank you.